You might have heard of NASA's Magellan mission to Venus. Magellan was an interplanetary spacecraft launched from the space shuttle. You might have marveled at it, thinking it was the first of its kind. But it's time to change that perception. Long before NASA even considered visiting Venus, the Russians were sending probes to this mysterious planet. The Russian government was reluctant to share the findings from this mission. But the secrets are out now. Classified photos from Russia's exploration of Venus have been revealed. Today we invite you to join us on an adventure through intriguing facts about the Venus missions and the photos taken on this extraordinary expedition. Tiajali Sputnik It's always exciting to come across a piece of information you didn't know before. In 1961, while all eyes were on NASA and its interest in Mars and other planets, the Russians took a step towards exploring Venus. This interesting journey began on February 4, 1961. Unfortunately, in the end, the vehicle couldn't leave Earth's orbit. You may not have heard about this mission before, as the Soviet Union was not inclined to share details of the failed mission. In fact, such information is often erased from official records. So why was this launch unsuccessful? The exact cause is unknown, but it may have stemmed from problems with the structure of the heavy satellite called Tyazeli Sputnik. Venera 1VA, or Tiajali Sputnik, did not produce the desired result, but it held important lessons for scientists on how to proceed. Venera 1 was launched just eight days after Tiajali Sputnik's failed attempt, and thus the Venera missions continued. Venera 1 Venera 1, part of the Soviet Union's missions to Venus, was an impressive vehicle weighing 635 kilograms. In contrast, Tiajali Sputnik weighed only 83 kilograms and was quite light. Venera 1 was spin-stabilized and contained various scientific instruments such as a magnetometer, micrometeorite detectors, and radiation measuring devices. Like many other spacecraft, its internal atmosphere was filled with nitrogen gas to ensure the instruments operated at a stable temperature. After the preparations were completed, Venera 1 was launched from Earth's orbit into space on February 12, 1961. Two successful communications took place in the first two days after launch. The first session was on February 12th at a distance of 126,300 kilometers, and the second session was on February 13th at a distance of 488,900 kilometers. Under normal circumstances, it was planned to receive data every five days. In accordance with this plan, Another communication session took place on February 17th from a distance of 1.89 million kilometers. At this point, the researchers believed that Venera was working without any problems, but this was the last successful communication. Communication attempts within the next five days failed. Although news from Venera 1 was expected until March 4th, communication ceased completely. Venera 2 this new vehicle was quite similar to Venera 1, but it also carried a television system and additional scientific instruments. Its purpose was not to land on Venus, but to pass by the planet, gather information, and transmit this information to Earth. On February 27, 1966, this spacecraft passed approximately 24,000 kilometers from Venus and then settled into an orbit towards the Sun. However, the device experienced overheating problems and ceased its activities. It is not known exactly whether Venera 2 experienced this overheating problem before or after approaching Venus. But one thing is clear. The spacecraft could not send any data. This indicated that more advanced vehicles needed to be designed. The Soviets designed four new spacecraft, Venera 3, 4, 5, and 6, to study the atmosphere of Venus in more detail. These vehicles weighed approximately 900 kilograms and contained a detachable capsule that would land in the atmosphere, along with a number of scientific instruments. This landing module contained additional scientific instruments such as a barometer, radar, gas analyzer, and thermometers. So what kind of results did the new vehicles achieve on Venus with these instruments? Venera 3 Venera 3 was launched from Tyazeli Sputnik towards Venus, and this time the purpose was different. Venera 3 was prepared to land on the surface of Venus and was equipped with radio communication systems, scientific instruments, energy sources, and USSR medals. Although Venera 3 was intended to land on Venus, 
It became the first spacecraft to crash into another planet when it crashed into Venus on March 1, 1966. The communication system also failed before it could gather data about the planet. Although no communication could be established, estimates of the crash site indicated that it was between 20 degrees north and 30 degrees south latitude and 60 and 80 east longitude. Despite the failures of Venera 1, 2, and 3, the determination and innovation of Soviet space efforts manifested itself this time. These three vehicles ultimately laid the groundwork for future spacecraft that would illuminate the mysteries of Venus. Venera 4 had a 3.5-meter dash-long main unit carrying a 383-kilogram landing module. This spacecraft was equipped with various important instruments and was protected within a pressurized shell. On June 12, 1967, Venera 4 was successfully launched from Tiajali Sputnik. After a course correction on July 29, the spacecraft successfully entered Venus's dark atmosphere on October 18, 1967. Venera 4 Venera 4 had a 3.5-meter dash-long main structure and housed the 383-kilogram lander, protected by a pressure cabin filled with sensitive instruments. Launched from Tiajali Sputnik on June 12, 1967, Venera 4 performed a course correction on July 29 and made a successful entry into Venus's again dark atmosphere on October 18, 1967. Immediately before entering the atmosphere, Venera 4 separated from its main module and began to follow an independent path. However, the main module was not designed to withstand atmospheric conditions. The vehicle opened its first parachute at an altitude of 52 kilometers, followed by the main parachute. Just five minutes after the separation of the main module from the vehicle, the scientific instruments were activated. Operating at an altitude of approximately 55 kilometers, these instruments transmitted a total of 23 different data for 93 minutes. However, when it reached an altitude of 25 kilometers, it could not withstand the intense atmospheric pressure of Venus and lost its function. Still, thanks to the data it obtained, we learned that the atmosphere is 90, 95 percent carbon dioxide. The main module did not detect a significant magnetic field or radiation belt on Venus, but did detect a slight hydrogen spike at an altitude of 9,900 kilometers. It was thought that the spacecraft touched the surface of Venus and that the temperature and pressure it measured reflected the surface conditions of the planet. Although Venera 4 operated for only 93 minutes, it was concluded that the mission was successful with the data it sent. Venera 5 and Venera 6. The Venera 5 and Venera 6 spacecraft were quite similar to each other in structure and purpose. Although they had a similar structure to Venera 4, they were designed to be more durable in order to collect data for longer periods in deeper atmospheric layers. The main unit housed the landers, which had small parachutes to allow them to make a deeper study of the atmosphere. Thus, they were intended to make a rapid descent to the planet. Inside the vehicles were a number of scientific instruments that could analyze the atmosphere of Venus in detail. Venera 5 set off on January 5, 1969. A course correction was made on March 14, and when it reached Venus on May 16, it separated from its main module. After entering the atmosphere, the vehicle transmitted valuable information to Earth for 53 minutes. This information included the high temperature, pressure, and carbon dioxide ratio in the Venusian atmosphere. Venera 6 was sent on January 10, 1969, and reached Venus on May 17, separating from its main module. The vehicle collected data for 51 minutes in the atmosphere. However, the photometer device failed to send the expected data. The data collected by Venera 5 and 6 revealed the detailed composition of Venus's atmosphere, indicating that the planet was highly unlikely to harbor life. These vehicles also provided valuable information about Venus's atmosphere and cloud structure. Venera 7 In 1970, the Venera 7 spacecraft was launched on August 17 to land on Venus. The main objective of this mission was to make a soft landing on the planet's surface and gather information from there. The probe was cooled to minus 8 degrees before entering the atmosphere. However, due to technical problems during landing, 
Communication was cut off within 23 minutes. However, in this short time, it recorded that the surface temperature of Venus was about 475 degrees, and the pressure was equivalent to 900 meters deep in the Earth's seas. For years, it was believed that such a mission was impossible due to Venus's dense atmosphere and temperature. However, the Soviets achieved this success despite these challenges. But this information was kept from the public for years. Now that this information has come to light, it begs the question of what other secrets the government is hiding. Many claims have been made about theories about alien beings, but none of them have been confirmed yet. Venera 8 In early 1972, following the launch of the Venera 8 spacecraft, a new step was taken to gain a deeper understanding of the mysteries of Venus. This exciting mission, which began on March 27th, was completed when the spacecraft reached Venus after a long journey of 117 days. During the journey, on April 6th, the vehicle maneuvered to correct its own orbit. The internal temperature of the vehicle was lowered to minus 15 degrees before entering the atmosphere. When it entered the Venusian atmosphere, it slowed its speed to about 250 meters per second. During this process, it activated its scientific instruments at an altitude of 50 kilometers and began collecting data. When Venera 8 reached the surface of Venus, the temperature and pressure values it measured were consistent with the data previously obtained by Venera 7. It also measured the light level at the surface, revealing that Venus has a light level similar to that of Earth on a cloudy day. This finding was promising for future photography missions to the surface of Venus. Venera 8 detected sulfuric acid in the atmosphere of Venus, which provided valuable information about the planet's chemical composition. Venera 8 managed to operate in Venus's dense atmosphere for 63 minutes. This was enough time for us to learn how challenging the planet's surface conditions are. From Venera 9 to Venera 12 The Venera missions, carried out between 1972 and 1978, were launched by the Soviet Union to explore the mysteries of Venus. The remarkable Venera 9, 10, 11, and 12 spacecraft in this series aim to obtain real-time images from the surface of Venus. Venera 9 and 10 were the first spacecraft to reach the surface of Venus. The first photographs taken from the surface of Venus, despite spherical distortions, showed in detail the planet's rocky, uneven, and harsh surface. These images were a turning point in space history and revealed how different the surface of Venus is from Earth's. Venera 11 and 12 aimed to analyze the chemical composition of the surface of Venus. According to the data sent by these vehicles, the atmosphere of Venus is mainly composed of carbon dioxide and there are thick sulfuric acid clouds on the surface. In addition, these vehicles obtained evidence of the existence of lightning and thunder activity in the Venusian atmosphere. Venera 13 and Venera 14 In 1981, the Soviet Union continued its Venus missions by sending Venera 13 into space. This spacecraft was technologically far superior to its predecessors and brought us the first color photographs from the surface of Venus. These photographs were revolutionary in our understanding of the mysteries of Venus and provided clues to the formation of rocks. Venera 13 had equipment that could analyze the materials on the surface. Analysis of the surface samples provided critical information about the geological structure of Venus. The vehicle also recorded the sound of the Venusian atmosphere. These sounds provided a unique perspective on the planet's stormy and impressive atmosphere. Venera 14 followed the success of Venera 13 and was sent to Venus with a similar structure and equipment. After successfully landing on the surface, it sent impressive color photographs from the surface of Venus. Venera 14 also drilled into the surface and took soil samples. Analysis of these samples provided more in-depth information about the geological structure and formation of Venus. Venera 15 and Venera 16 Pioneer 12 had radar-based mapping capabilities, but Venus 15 and 16 performed this task in a more sophisticated manner. Although these spacecraft did not have landing equipment, they did have the equipment to scan the surface of Venus in detail with radar. The images obtained thanks to these radars showed that the surface of Venus is full of volcanic eruptions, large craters, and lava flows. 
This revealed that the planet is constantly undergoing change, both by internal dynamics and external factors. Although America's Pioneer 12 and impressive Magellan missions have made great contributions to the surface of Venus, the Soviet Union's Venera program stands out as the most comprehensive and detailed study in Venus exploration. Although the space programs of Europe and Japan have also contributed to the exploration of Venus, the success and pioneering of Venera is undeniable. Also, did you know that the Soviet Union had a new planned mission to Venus? This planned mission, called Venera D, is designed to include both an orbiter and a lander. It is expected to be launched between 2026 and 2031. NASA may also contribute to this project, and the mission may include balloons, plasma measuring devices, or a station that can stay on the surface for a long time. In addition to all this, according to information leaked from Russia, the main purpose of Venera D is to communicate with alien beings in the future. The Soviets launched this secret mission to obtain alien technology and knowledge. This theory is popular among those who believe that Venera 16 detected signals from these beings' planet and even took pictures of them, and that the Soviets are trying to make a deal with these beings. However, the Soviet government is determined to keep all information on this subject secret. Who knows? Maybe soon we will witness more discoveries that we are not alone in the universe. What are your expectations for future Venera missions? Don't forget to share your thoughts with us. See you in the next video.